I just came up with a new way to build floating shelves and I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty excited about it. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it, but first let me explain how I got here. About a year ago, I was commissioned to build some floating shelves, which was great, except I'd never built floating shelves before. So I started doing some research, trying to find the best way to build floating shelves, and I kept coming across the same thing over and over again, which was to build them using plywood miter folds. And if you're unfamiliar with a miter fold, just Google it or YouTube it, they are everywhere. The only problem is I'm not a big fan of miter folds, especially when done with plywood. It's not that they don't look good or that they can't be done well, I just don't think it's the most durable option for something like a shelf. Plywood veneer isn't exactly known for being a strong material. Just look at the edge of any piece of plywood and you'll see just how brittle that veneer can be. So I set out to find another way and this is what I came up with. Instead of the entire shelf being made out of plywood, I chose a hybrid approach and made the face of the shelf out of real hardwood, which you can see right here. I then add a rabbet to each side of the face that can then accept the top and bottom panels of the shelf. This leaves a quarter inch of real hardwood on each corner of the shelf, which is obviously much stronger than plywood veneer. And if you want to see this technique in more detail, I do have a video all about it on my channel. And while this technique does work really well, I've built many shelves this way, I always knew that I wanted to try and do it a little bit better. And then I saw this router bit. What this is, is a glue line router bit, and it's used for gluing two boards at their edges together, and it creates perfect alignment and a better gluing surface when gluing two boards together. And the second I saw it, I knew that this would probably work perfectly for what I was thinking would be the improvement for the joinery for my floating shelves. Now let me show you. The first thing I wanna talk about is the actual construction of the shelves themselves. This is a completed shelf right here with one finished end, which I'm gonna be making in this video. But I first want to talk about the overall construction, what's needed, and how this goes together so that when I'm talking about it in the video, it might make a little more sense. My shelves really only require two materials, which is plywood for the top and bottom. I used three quarter on this one. You could also use half inch plywood. You just have to adjust the way you do your joinery. And then a piece of hardwood that matches the species of the plywood. And that's it. So let's talk about this joinery here and head over to the router table. So when it comes to routing in the joinery, there's really only three things you have to worry about. And that's how the material passes through the bit, the depth of the cut, and the height the bit is set at. So in order to create the 90 degree joint we're looking for, the top and bottom panels will ride just flat on the table and go through the bit. Before the facing pieces, the, the real hardwood pieces, we're gonna put those on edge and they're gonna go through the bit that way. And then it's gonna be flipped over like this, and then pass through once more. And don't worry, you'll see how all this is done later in the video. Now when it comes to the depth of the cut, it's a simple setup, and all you want to look at is the top tooth of this bit. And you want that to be in perfect alignment with the fence. So just take a straight edge, put it along the fence, pull it forward, and then push it back until that top tooth is just barely grazing your straight edge. And then that's it for the depth. But as far as the height adjustment goes for the bit, this is something that you're gonna to have to play around with based on the thickness of your material. I used a bunch of scraps that were the same thickness as what I was gonna be using, and I ran it through a couple times just to get it so that that facing piece was just a little bit proud of the top and bottom pieces. So then I could come back later, sand it so it's all flush. So that's just something is kind of trial and error and you'll just kind of have to figure out on your own. And that's all you really need to know right now, so let's get into the build. Once I get everything cut to size, I like to look everything over, make sure there's no damage, and then this helps me choose which sides I want to be visible for my shelf. I then like to use blue painter's tape to mark which sides of the boards are going to be visible, and then draw an arrow so I know which edge is going to be my front edge. This is going to help me make sure that I run the boards through in the correct orientation when I get over to the router table. Here you can see how that blue tape helps me know that I need to have this side up and the arrow points towards the fence. I like to start with the flat panels, the top and bottom panels that are gonna make up the shelf. These are the easier ones to run through as they get to just ride flat on the table. And here you can see how that profile is routed into each edge. And because the shelf is also gonna have a finished end, I then flip it and do the short end as well. And this is done to both the top and bottom panels. You just wanna make sure that when you're doing the short end that you wanna do almost the exact opposite on each panel so they're kind of a mirror of one another. And now it's time to route what I'm gonna call the mating joint into the facing trim. And full disclosure, this took me two tries, so I'm first gonna show you what not to do. 
So the first issue was that I was trying to use a piece of stock that was three quarters of an inch thick, which was just a little too thick because you want that top edge to be about a quarter inch. So I was trying to remove about a half inch of material just to get that top edge to blend with the plywood a little more. But in doing that, the first pass is fine, but the second pass, the board doesn't have much to ride on as it's leaving the router bit. So it makes the cut a little sketchy. But the real issue is that with the face only being two inches, it doesn't have enough room in between the top and bottom panel for a mounting bracket, which is typically at least three quarters of an inch. And I only had about a half inch left over. So this was just bad math on my part. So I went back to the scrap bin and grabbed a new piece of walnut and ripped it to two and three eighths inches, which will leave me enough room for the support bracket. After I had the new board ripped down, I also went and then planed it down to half an inch so that I wouldn't have to take such a deep pass on the router. And another plus is that I wouldn't have to adjust the fence at all between doing the top and bottom pieces and doing the facing pieces. And another big benefit of this could be using less material, especially if you have the ability to resaw thicker material. So I moved the fence back to its original position when I did the top and bottom panels where it's in perfect alignment with that top tooth. So now the router bit is actually taking a much shallower pass, which is not only safer, but it's also easier on the machine. And like I said earlier, with the facing trim, you run it through on edge. You do one side, flip it over, and do the other side. Which I gotta say is much easier than the old way I used to do this. And here you can see a comparison between the first piece of trim I did and the second piece where it's a lot thinner, but the milling process is much easier. And now there's enough room in between the upper and lower panel where we can fit some sort of support structure or a bracket to hang it on the wall. And that's it as far as the milling process goes. Besides the initial sizing issue, this was an incredibly simple process. Next, it's time to cut the miter for the corner of the shelf. I prefer to cut my pieces a little bit long as they can be trimmed later on after the shelf is glued up. After I mark the piece, I take it over to the miter saw, set it to 45 degrees, and make the cut. I first cut the long side and then using the leftover piece, I cut the smaller side, making sure to cut from the same end that we just made the cut of the other one. This is gonna make sure that there's a perfect grain match that wraps all the way around the shelf. Just like this. Now that I have the 45s cut, I will glue them together using the miter fold method. And I know I said I didn't like miter folds, but this is a miter fold being done with solid hardwood, not plywood veneer. There's a big difference. I like to use painter's tape and a straight edge to get my boards aligned for the glue up. I use one vertical piece of tape to initially stick the pieces down, and then flip it over and add two more pieces of tape just in case the first one tears. And then flip it back over, give it a little test fold, and then apply the glue. And this is definitely not a joint that you want to go easy on the glue. I like to do a nice thorough coating, come back with the brush, make sure that the entire joint is covered, and then fold it up and make sure that I get plenty of squeeze out so I know that joint is really going to hold together. If this joint fails, really the whole shelf is going to fail. So you don't need a ton of pressure on this joint, so I just use a couple pieces of tape to just hold it in place for about an hour or two until it's pretty much dry and then you can come back and move on to the next step. And if I get a lot of squeeze out, I make sure to clean out those inner corners because that's where those panels are gonna sit in and you definitely don't want any glue, dried up glue getting in the way and keeping those panels from fully seating in those grooves. So after letting it sit for about two hours, I come back and remove the tape and now it's time for a little test fit. And as I hoped, everything went together perfectly. These things fit like a glove. But there was still one last thing that these shelves needed and that was some internal supports. As you can see right here, the rear corner doesn't really have much support. So those two pieces can kind of flex inward or outward and we wanna make sure we stabilize that. So all I had to do was measure the gap, head over to the scrap bin, grab a piece that was close, if not a little bit oversized, 
If it's a little too big, I can send it through the planer until I get the perfect fit. And once I know I have the perfect fit, all I have to do is mark it. And I want to cut this a little bit small. I don't want it to fit perfectly from front to back. It doesn't really need to. So head over to the miter saw, cut it about a half inch shorter than the depth, and then take those back to the shelf. And we're going to glue them to the inside of the top or bottom panel. And I'm adding two supports here, but this shelf being so small probably doesn't need to. But for the sake of the video, I went ahead and did two supports since anything over 36 inches is probably going to need at least two to three supports. And I'm just using some CA glue to quickly attach these and make sure to keep in mind where the supports on your support brackets are. You want to make sure that these don't get in the way. And now that I have those done, it's time for final assembly of the shelf. So for this first kind of test shelf that I'm making here, I'm only going to apply glue to the innermost groove that I routed into this facing trim. And I know that's not complete coverage, but the glue squeeze out that happens at the top edge of these shelves can be kind of a pain to clean up. So if I can just apply it to this inner groove and that's a good enough hold, then that would be an even better reason to use this method. But I understand that it may require more glue, but we'll see how this one holds up. And I'm also adding some glue to the inner supports, which is going to hold the top and bottom pieces together as well. And here's where this method is really going to shine. With these grooves being routed into both of the pieces, it really locks them in. You don't really have to add any other pressure than downward pressure. With my old method, I had to have pressure from both ways and everything just kind of slid around and it was a really stressful glue up. But this way is so much easier. These things basically put themselves together. Now all I have to do is add clamps, and just a forewarning, the clamping didn't go as smoothly as I thought it would, but I have learned since, and this was my first time gluing up this type of shelf, so I can only get better from here. So I started with these bandy clamps, which I thought would be great for this, but it turns out it actually requires a little bit more downward force than these can apply to really seat those grooves. So these actually ended up just getting in my way, and I will end up removing them later. So after I put the bandy clamps on, I could see that the face trim wasn't exactly seating into the upper and lower panels, so I came back with some of these trigger clamps to apply a little bit more pressure. And they worked great, but what really worked well were the F-style clamps that I'll add in a few seconds here. And like I said, here I am removing the bandy clamps because really they just got in my way and weren't applying enough pressure, but it made room for these F-style clamps, which worked really well. And if I was to do this again, I would probably only use those F-style clamps and maybe some parallel clamps as well. But I was trying to use clamps that maybe everyone had. Not everyone has parallel clamps, so I tried to do it with what more people might have. But the F-style clamps worked great, and this looks a little crazy, but... It came out really well, and I think the next glue up will be a little bit better and probably require less clamps. So I let it sit in the clamps for about two hours, and then I came back, removed all of the many clamps that were on there, stripped it of the tape, and then the next part of the process is to trim off those overhanging face trim ends. And there's many different ways you could trim this shelf, but I chose to do it on the miter saw just because it's easy. But if you have a table saw, you could do it on there. If you have a track saw, I've done it before with a track saw, but really the easiest thing you can do is on a miter saw. It's a little awkward, but it works well. And here you get a really good view of how that joinery all comes together and how strong this shelf is really going to be. And like I said, it was a really simple setup. This shelf was really easy to build, especially compared to my other version. This was incredibly simple. And I ended it just by giving it a light sand. And here's where I want to tell you to be careful and show you the vulnerability of plywood veneer, which this is completely my fault and not the veneer's fault. But... I did end up sanding right through the veneer on one of these sides just because it is so thin.
And here's a big reason why I think this is a far superior way to building floating shelves over something like a plywood miter fold. You have options with these front edges now because you have some wood there. You have some real hard wood. You can put a round over on it, or if you wanted to get a little crazy, you can put a big heavy chamfer on it. I'm not sure anyone would ever do this, but it's an option. And as I finish off this chamfer, that really completes this build. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you learned something. If you want to try this out, or if you have a way that you do this similarly, or have a different way that you want to try, let me know about it. I think this is an awesome way, a huge improvement on how I was building them previously. So until next time, I'm Jordan. This is Everyday Builds. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.